The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive. This one is part 53. Fitting the saddle tank upright supports, marking out the position for the saddle tank, drilling the holes in the cab for attaching the tank and trying a test fit to make sure that everything lines up. Here are the freshly painted parts on the workbench. These are of course the two front saddle tank mountings that are made. This job was quite easy up to now and then when I started manhandling the cab and the tank it suddenly became a bit more difficult. For instance this wasn't easy I don't know if you can make this clip out, it's inside the frames showing the four nuts and bolts that hold the main mounting to the frames. I ended up using a spanner but I couldn't video that because my hand was in the way. Here was an early experiment using a socket wrench which didn't work very well. Eventually all the nuts and bolts were tightened holding the brackets securely to the frame stretcher. So it's time to fit the first of the uprights. I'm pleased to say that all of the bolt holes in these components line up very well. To say that I use the felt tip pen to mark the positions, I'm quite pleased about this. And yes, I do know that it's not proper engineering, but this channel is not about proper engineering. If you want to watch machining videos, there are thousands of them on YouTube. My channel is a little bit different. From my experience, I like to show an easy way to do jobs. But a lot of the things that you see me do take a lot of practice to get to the level at which I do them, if you see what I mean. Practice makes perfect, well, most of the time anyway. These bolts are such a good fit in the holes, I do not need to use a spanner on the other side. As soon as I start to tighten the nuts, the bolts don't rotate, so I can just continue tightening the nuts until the parts are held securely. Here's a bit of a mistake, but please, do not comment at this stage, I haven't finished the job yet. The mistake is, there isn't enough black paint to cover the etch primer on one of the brackets, oh dear. Moving on now to the other side, I didn't turn the locomotive round, I put the camera at the other side. And I was lucky because I couldn't see the viewfinder, but the camera angle was about right. Here I've placed three bolts in their holes that go through into the main mounting bracket. And as you can see, there is no camera trickery, I'm tightening the nuts at the other side, but the bolt heads do not revolve. That is because these holes are a good fit, not a tight fit, in fact I think I saw one move slightly then, but a good fit. And once again, really, all of these holes were drilled by eye, using a centre punch to find the centre of the felt tip pen mark. In this episode, I'm going to show another way of drilling holes in pieces of sheet metal, without using a centre punch, but still using the felt tip pen method. In this clip you can see the arrangement and how the brackets bolt together to hold the saddle tank in the correct position. I'm about to show the drilling of the holes in the front of the cab to take bolts that will support the rear of the saddle tank. I do not recommend using this method, it is better to centre punch the hole positions in order to initially guide the drill bit. The first method that I'm showing here is a 3 16ths of an inch diameter twist drill bit fitted into my DeWalt drill. Initially the twist drill wanders all over the place and you have to guide the drill very accurately to make it go through the felt tip pen mark where it is on the metal. Here I'm showing what can happen if doing it this way it goes wrong. The drill bit is wandering all over the place and I really have to persuade it to go through the metal where I want it to go, not where it wants to go. If you watch this part of the clip carefully, you will see that I keep changing the angle of the drill bit. In the end, I get three holes that are in the right position. There is, however, an easier way of doing this. The easiest way is to use a centre punch, but it's difficult on this large piece of metal. I don't really have anywhere to put it. For this method, I'm using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill bit. And this drill bit wanders about worse than the large bit. But eventually, I got three accurate pilot holes. Here, I'm enlarging the pilot holes to the 3 16 of an inch diameter that I need them to be. Now the drill bit can't really wander about, and it goes through the holes very quickly. It's very important to release the pressure on the drill the minute it breaks through. And I don't always get this right. 
I am aware that the paint is getting marked, but as this is going to be removed very shortly by shot blasting, it's unimportant. The original three holes in this spectacle plate had three bolts in position. This is the inside of the cab. And initially, I was a bit concerned about the clearance of the bolt heads against the firebox. In this clip, I'm deburring the holes, but I'm deburring the holes quite deeply, almost making a semi countersink in case I need to use countersunk head bolts for the clearance. I don't think I will, but it's just a safety precaution. This is showing the right hand side of the spectacle plate, and the holes are clearly in the correct position. And indeed they are at the other side. Here are the bolts fitted. The idea is to put a bolt through, fit a nut, then once the mounting brackets on the tank align with these bolts, not only will this method make it easier to fit the saddle tank, it will space it slightly away from the spectacle plate, which is what I want. This bit was fun. I'm temporarily fitting the saddle tank to the spectacle plate. It's not on the engine, but all these parts are quite heavy, quite sharp and cumbersome. And although you can't see it, the mounting brackets on the saddle tank fit perfectly over the six bolts protruding from the spectacle plate. But it is a bit of a tight fit, so I'm going to enlarge the holes in the mounting brackets on the saddle tank. That will make fitting and removal far easier. Now it's time for a special feature in this episode. Spray painting for village idiots. I'm masking off the surrounding area with a couple of pieces of cloth. There are some scratches on the main bracket and I need to spray the heads of the nuts and bolts to stop them rusting. An alternative would have been to remove the entire assembly, the bracket and the uprights, from the engine, paint them and then refit the brackets back to the engine. But no thanks, I think I'll just do it this way, because it's easier. The end result is about the same in this context. The scratches have disappeared and the nuts and bolts are painted black. Here's a shot on the other side and as you can see, the bracket itself was quite badly scratched. And I didn't even have to mask off this side. I literally just sprayed it with the can like this. I will use the acronym KISS for this one. Keep it simple, stupid. And that is it. An extra special treat now for the strange people out there. It's a clip of the paint drying in real time. I think it's time for me to go and play a video game called Skyrim on my Xbox Series X. Which involves wandering around a landscape in first person, looking through the camera lens picking flowers, killing animals, meeting people that I don't need to kill, but most of the time I'm killing people who, to be fair, do attack me first, but they don't last long. And I really love this game. And I almost forgot, you also get to kill dragons. It's a great game. I've been playing it for a few years now, and I'm currently on level 169. That's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.